that's what it is right here. It's fine here. Do you want to have some ice cream? No, no. I don't have an ice cream. It's pronounced Lupita Nyonga. No, it's not Nyonga. Nyongo. We're looking at. How do you pronounce Lupita Nyongo? Duh. -uh. She did it herself for you. Lupita Nyongo. 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 In American. Lupita Nyongo. Nyongo. Lupita Nyongo. Lupita Nyongo. Nyongo. Wow. How do you know that's her? You don't know that's her. Yeah, I do, because she posted it on her fucking Instagram. Right there. Those are her lips. Well, I've been recording you, and you've been on Midnight Movie Matinee. <laughs> <laughs> You're an idiot. All right. Welcome to Midnight Movie Matinee. Apparently, I'm an idiot. Yes, he's an idiot. No, I meant that as my name. He's yes, idiot. that's his name, idiot. No, no but also, name... also Steven is his name. And I'm Danielle, and we just watched the Oscars, so you don't have to, because um, I'm pretty sure, you know, most of you didn't, you just kind of whatever, or you watched on Twitter. That's actually a thing now. You could totally watch an entire television show on Twitter just by reading tweets, because sometimes they're better, more entertaining than the actual show itself. But that's like going to a wrestling match and not looking at the wrestling, but looking at the people in the stands watching the wrestling except slightly different because at least wrestlers are like throwing each other and these people are just kind of standing around preening and talking about our, each other and themselves but and jared leto's so good at preening i know he very is he's very good at preening jared leto mm -hmm. is a beautiful beautiful man anyway so we just watched the show and we're gonna give our quick quick thoughts hopefully quick 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 thoughts about what we thought about some of the bigger events of the night so i guess let's start with ellen's hosting how did she do I was pleasantly surprised. I had very low expectations going in for Ellen. I didn't think she could perform to a level that would match Seth MacFarlane's wonderful... Uh, douchiness. Douchiness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not douchiness. It's like it frat was, boy -ness. No, Yeah, frat boy douchiness. Frat boy douchiness. I don't know. Sometimes the thing... I made this comment before the show started that sometimes I feel that Ellen's comedy is a little milk toast, Like some of her older stand-up... For me, sometimes it's funny and sometimes it just, I just feel like I'm watching cardboard or something. I know that's mean. Sorry, Ellen. And, but when I watched the show, I was pleasantly surprised because she was really chill. And I think it created this, it immediately created this atmosphere of calm and ease for all the celebrities. Like she was walking around, you know, that whole bit. Some people hated that pizza bit, but I thought it was hysterical because it's and it so, showed, like, all the spaces of the actors and, like, what they're really like. Like, like Brad Pitt <laughs> handing out plates <laughs> and Julie and uh, Meryl Streep definitely wanting a slice. Yeah, like it. Freaking uh, Harrison Ford. I think he got the vegetarian pizza. And he was, like, looking at it. It just, it gave, it gave a little moment. It felt very unscripted, whether or not it actually was slightly scripted or not. You know, whether or not they were like, mm. okay, we're going to order pizza now behind when the camera went off them. It just it felt very unscripted. It felt very chill. It felt like a nice moment, and it it made she made you feel personable with these actors. She had them doing selfies. It humanized and, them. Yeah, it humanized them in this show where they're dressed like friggin' mannequins that you would see on Macy's and Times Square, and you, these people that are too beautiful to exist. And like too... all these shitty reality <laughs> shows that there are, there should be a reality show that's just actors eating pizza. Actors eating pizza. Isn't that just like how uh, Jerry Seinfeld... When they, comedians in cars, comedians drink, in cars drinking, drinking coffee. coffee. That's amazing, because it is. It humanizes them. It turns them into people, and sometimes their images are so above people that you, you stop seeing them as humans and you start seeing them as these weird like aliens from outer space that come down and like, tell us things <laughs> and whatever. Favorite uh, Ellen joke of the night? Favorite Ellen joke of the night. Or worst Ellen joke of the night, either or. Worst Ellen joke of the night, that Liza Minnelli dig was mean. That yeah, was a that necessary... Was really harsh. I think... It was like, who's that? That's I that... Know. 
that bitchy man. Ellen. I know. Yeah, I was like, whoa, the, that's the edgy Ellen. I'm like, yeah. edgy Ellen, don't come out tonight. We don't need. We don't need that right now. I think she realized it too. That's why Stephen doesn't believe me, but I think she had two sets of jokes. I think she had her fucking edgy jokes when she was trying to be Seth MacFarlane too, and she had her, well, I'm just gonna do my thing. And I think she tried out her edgy jokes in the beginning, realized, hmm, maybe I'm gonna make some people cry, and that's not nice. And so she just decided to be chill. She even took a selfie with Liza later on because she was like, oh, man, I feel bad for calling you a man. Come yeah. on. <laughs> My favorite Ellen joke of the night was that horrible waiting joke that she did at the end that was just like textbook Ellen. Just keep on. Just keep, keep on it dragging going. it out. Yeah. Keep on keeping that was, on. That was strong. Yeah. And now the winners. Okay, yes. And that's. Let's move on to the winners. So all in all, I think the show went as fast as it ever will. I, You know, we've tried super hard to make the Oscars shorter, but the only way to make the Oscars shorter is to just cut the BS and literally just have, like, one guy reading out the names and then someone coming up and uh, taking the award <laughs> and sitting the fuck down. Like, that's the only way to make this shorter. But what do you got to add in? The host making jokes, the cutaways, the sequences, the, the in memoriam. Bet Midler saying you are the wind beneath my motherfucking wings, flapping her arms for the world to see. Mm. This is going to be a long show. I think we've gotten used to this. It's over. Every time I see someone making a tired joke about how long the Oscars are, I'm like, w-. that's like that refrigerator's running joke. Like, it's old. It's done. We get it. It's long. Move on. All right. So, winners. Let's start off with the top. Let's just go down the list. Top. The top of the list. We're on, yeah. We're looking on the internet because we don't want to screw it up. Yeah. Because we're not going to pull a fucking John Travolta on this. Oh, yeah. Adele Danzim. Please come to the front of the stage. Adele Danzim. John Travolta, you had one job, sir. Anyway. Okay. So, Best Picture winner was... 12 Years a Slave. 12 Years a Slave. Which definitely deserved to win, I think. And now, before I say anything, I have not actually seen this movie, so I know you're totally going to describe my opinion. However... I've seen a lot of clips. I've seen a lot of interviews. And the thing about it is, is that I know I haven't seen it, so technically I shouldn't have an opinion on For it. For the record, we've seen, I think, three of the best picture. Yeah, we saw three of them. Okay. Three and, I think yeah, so. three and a half. Whatever. But my point being that I think when I saw the movie, it just looked like a very beautiful, sweeping, intense mm-hmm. film. And honestly, one of the reasons I haven't seen it is because it's kind of like why I put off watching Schindler's List for like 10 years. Because I know I'm going to watch it, and it's going to make me curl into a ball and cry about the state of the universe. And I really don't need to do that right now. So I haven't watched 12 Years of Slave yet because I'm saving it for a time when I can really appreciate it and not fall apart and want to eat a pint of Ben and Jerry's and cry. Um, So I'm saving it. I'm probably going to watch it very soon. It's just like when I finally watched Schindler's List, I appreciated the hell out of it. I thought it was fantastic. And I'm sure, and and, it, and back in the day, I'm sure it deserved that best picture. Also, movies, just like this deserves best picture. Movies like that, like I never watched The Notebook in theaters, thank God. But for a man, it's very awkward to have to go to a cinema and then cry your brains out, and then like walk out of the theater around other people. You know, the best part of this sentence is is that you just compared the Twelve Years a Slave to The Notebook. You just compared, I was talking about Schindler's List, another emotional film about human suffering, and 12 Years a Slave, an emotional film about human suffering. But and that's like, the last time I really no- cried super hard at a movie, <laughs> which no- I'm sure I'll cry for 12 Years a Slave. But The Notebook, a, an impassioned tale about a woman suffering God. mental loss. Uh, it's okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. I have the part out of this. Yeah, no, but you don't. You Let the people know. Let the people uh, know you cried at the... First of all, uh, now you, they know you cried at the notebook. Second of all, yeah. But no, I understand what you're saying. It's kind of awkward to be weeping in a theater. Like, it's one thing to shed a couple of tears. But yeah, I've, I've ugly cried in some movie theaters. And it gets awkward. Because it's like, uh, I'm around too many people. So, I'm totally stoked for 12 Years a Slave. It kind of... Stoked. Wins... <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay, continue. Can't say stoked for 12 Oh, you mean slave. you're stoked for it to win. Yes. I thought you were trying to say you're stoked for watching. Like, I'm stoked to watch all that <laughs> fucking slavery. Yeah. All right, okay, continue. Let's journey back 400 years. <laughs> 400 years. To a time when Disney couldn't make things pretty. <laughs> anyway. Um. What the hell was I saying? 
He was stoked for 12 Years a Slave to win mm-hmm. Best Picture. Yeah, because it kind of made up for not winning Best Actor and Best, Best Actor. I wanted 12 Years a Slave to sweep mm-hmm. so that it could be – it would have been a historical moment for, like, blacks, African-Americans in cinema because 12 Years a Slave had sweeped, like, Best Director, Best Picture – Best uh, best adapted screenplay, best actor, 